Uh, we were talking about the future, weren't we, and what society would be like, and the fact that maybe people at the moment don't have a particular attitude, the right attitude to society. And you, maybe you can explain why you think it would change when people could live longer. There's a great deal of ageism in present society, and this will gradually be overcome. For example, it's a little bit like sexism that has been overcome, and racism, which has been partially overcome. At least people realize that sexism and racism are bad things and are trying to combat them successfully, mainly because uh, women rose up and said, we're tired of the sexist attitude that's prevailing in society and other races have done the same thing. So I think one of the things that will happen is that the older people, especially if they're functionally younger, will stop uh, allowing that to happen and then it will disappear. That's one of the things that needs to supervene in the treatment of the elderly, especially the functionally active elderly. That's the main thing. This will change the attitude when people stop uh, acquiescing into it. A man has had a long history of having to deal with the knowledge of his own physical death and has developed various strategies of dealing with it, uh, with his knowledge. Uh, for example, the uh, Stoic philosophers and the hedonist philosophers uh, used to teach that uh, life would be boring if you lived too long. A lot of religions, of course, deal with the problem by showing there's life after death, in which case death is not too important. Uh, so the whole structure of society is geared to like not thinking about death and therefore not thinking about aging or getting old. And this is carried over into these bad images about aging. If you look at uh, literature, uh, there most authors in literature have a very bad image about uh, aging and death and some have a better image. The Grimm brothers, for example, have uh, one of the worst images. Uh, in their stories, the old people uh, are always t horrible witches or something like that, and they uh, prevail and suppress the younger people. But this is not a, this is an ingrown trait that has come eventually, or ultimately, from this knowledge of man's physical death and has invented all this. This will uh, be substantially adumbrated when we really begin living longer. Let's go wider now, Barry, so you can speak wider as well. Come on, I'll start right, okay, lovely. How do you think this will affect religion? You mentioned religion uh, and that death is a, a major part, of, well, a main part of religion. How do you think that will affect religion if people can live to 120? Will they start still at the very end of their life, start still thinking about a hereafter, possibly a life after death? I don't think that extending lifespan will have any uh, significant effect per se on religion. Uh, it doesn't conflict with any religious teaching as far as I know. But in any case, uh, uh, I don't know personally, let's say, whether there's a life after death and whether I'll find that out, say, when I'm 100 or 110. But I could just as soon wait till I'm 200 to find it out. When people at the age, on your diet, at the age of say 110, uh, towards the end of their life, what will happen that will cause them to die? Will they suddenly become very old but for a much shorter time? Yes, the survival curve, if, if it's extended, the end of the curve will be about the same. The years of, let's say, declining functional capacity are maybe the last 10 to 15 or 20 years of the lifespan now, say from 70 to 90 or the maybe or 80 to 100 are the declining years. These will stay about the same, but they'll occur much later. Right. And you don't think there will be any way, still with the same lifespan, say 120, to actually reduce that period? I see no particular prospect of reducing uh, that period at the moment. Well, that period is to some extent due to disease, not just to normal aging. So you may get a more rectangularized survival curve, but rectangularizing the survival curve, what can be done to some extent, say by antioxidants, by exercise, and by other regimes, which rectangularize the curve but don't actually extend lifespan. So if you extend lifespan by calorie restriction and also do some of these other things like exercise and not smoke and so forth, you get a better 
curve and squeeze those last, let's say, decrepit years into a shorter period. Keep the same size. Um, regarding exercise and health, because there's a, there's a strange phenomenon that's happening in Britain and I think around the world that sportsmen, for example, are now competing. We have a champion jockey in Great Britain who's 54 and he's competing against young people. I know jockeying, you know, horse riding isn't quite the same sport as say, playing football. but. It, uh, we have cricketers, we've got Borg who's come back at 34 or whatever it is too. So we have, across a spectrum of professional sports, people in, in their middle age who are competing against young people at a good level. I'm not saying they're winning, but they're competing at the same sort of level, which was unheard of even t maybe 10 years ago. How do you account for that? I mean, are we not, without doing anything, expanding our lifespan, just naturally, because we're e eating better and living healthier and exercising more? Well, on the whole, the population is increasing its average survival, but not its maximum lifespan. So that means it's healthier, but it's not actually aging at much less rate. So you get a squaring of the survival curve by the mechanisms that I said, by not smoking, by exercise, by eating a better general diet, but not really a calorically restricted diet, that will square the survival curve, rectangularize it, and the average lifespan will keep increasing. There's a limit, though, that you can get to, and probably the limit is 85. No matter how many things we do in terms of exercise and so forth, if we don't do something about the basic process of aging, average lifespan won't get beyond 85. Yeah, going tight. You've been taking your regime for the last four years or so. How has it affected you? Do you feel better and fitter and healthier? On the caloric restricted regimes, which I've been on for four or five years, yes, you have more energy and you get, you need less sleep. Those are the two kind of objective effects that I personally feel and that other people do on this kind of a diet. Has your mental capacity improved, do you think? Or well, the mental capacity, I think, relates to how energetic you feel generally and wide awake. So I would say uh, mine is better, but that's hard to measure that. It's easy to measure whether you get along with less sleep. Right. Do you do any tests on yourself to see whether you are fit? I do a number of tests, but I don't discuss them because it's, I don't consider myself an experiment. People try to say that I'm a personal experiment, but that's really silly. If I were to do an experiment with, say, one mouse, people would say, that's not an experiment. So with one person, it's not. So I don't discuss it in terms of an experiment. Now, I wasn't suggesting it was an experiment, but do you, because you're chartering unknown waters, aren't you? You're using yourself, with yourself. So now you, d you just said that I'm charting unknown waters no, no, using no, myself, that, no, and that's, that's an experiment. You right? As you experiment, but do you take tests just to make sure on yourself that you're not doing anything up? Powerful. Yes, yes, I do, yes. Yeah, rather than actually doing it, not suggesting you make yourself yes. an experiment. And are the indications that you obviously presumably are that you haven't done anything harmful to yourself? Yes, I haven't done anything harmful, that's certain, yes. Okay, thank you very much. And that's it. Okay. Can I answer that or what? Yeah, yeah. sure, please do. Hello? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read the later book, The 120-Year Diet. Yes. The 120-Year Diet. It's 1986. Well, I can't help you with that. Yeah. You do the best you can. Yeah. Well, some of them. <coughs> Twin Labs and uh, Thompson. Yeah. Okay. Bye.